Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here at Productronica 2023 and I'm joined by Carsten from Prettel. Carsten, good to see you. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Let's start with just a brief, very brief introduction to, to yourself and to Prettel. Yeah, thanks for having me, Phil. Um, Carsten Ellermeyer is my name. I'm uh, 43 years old. Um, I'm the CEO of the Prettel Electronics Group, which is the uh, electronic division part of a uh, family group which is called Brettel Group. This is a family-owned company in the third generation, 70 years old, based in the south of Germany in uh, close to Stuttgart, but of course globally footprint and uh, yeah, in each kinds of the world. Yeah. Working with cable assembly business, plastic injection business, electronic assembly business, so uh, e -quadra, e, uh, EMS overall with own brand names for uh, solar inverters, for example, for medical tech applications or for for power uh, generators, for example, with own okay. brand names. And but the biggest share is 90% EMS business overall. Okay, that's interesting. And you know, I'm going to cut to the chase. We seem to be in a very strange place in the industry. We've had some years of substantial growth, partly through organic, partly through acquisitions. Um, but we seem to have a market that's stuttering at the moment. We have a big inventory bubble working its way through the system. How's all that playing out in your business and other businesses in the industry? And where do you see it leading to with respect to 2024 performance? Yeah, this is the most difficult question and the, oh, yeah. there, definitely. So what we are currently seeing is in, uh, decreasing, especially in the European economy situation. We've seen still a stable trend in the NAFTA business, yeah, and of course Asia is driven by the political situation mainly. So there's this uh, very, very difficult to give a sentence for 24 right now based on that. Uh, we have a lot of uh, FAPs, uh, FAPs that is uh, that are not operating based on the the crisis, the world crisis. So we have, uh, for example, four FAPs in Ukraine who cannot operate in completely. Meanwhile, we have uh, FAPs in. Um, yeah, who, who has to compensate that to, to uh, bringing the products in. Me, uh, beside that, we have the situation that uh, some of the industries are, are still really good. For example, uh, medical industry is still on a high level. Um, uh, also, the, the uh, everything was not has to do with passenger, like passenger cars. Uh, so trucks or train business is still on a high level. Infrastructure business is still on a high level. Um, we're seeing first investments uh, from, from government sides out, out of Germany, to be honest, yeah? um, uh, to, to work against uh, the situation. We have uh, a very, very good uh, business in the US with a lot of um, pushing from the government side and especially for BEV applications for charging infrastructure. So uh, we will see. I think uh, it is too aggressive to, to plan on the same level for next year. Um, we should act in, uh, in the, from the planning side in a, in a small degrees of the business overall. To stabilize, um, the positive point is, as you have explained, we have um, no problems with uh, getting stock again. So it is much more easier to produce all the orders that we have in the books. Uh, also, the, the two years ago, it doesn't help to have a 200% order book if you don't can get the components. So maybe it could feel next year like a normal year. But uh, the the feeling right now is more negative, as you as you um, as you see in all the discussions. Yeah. 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 But from the from the real facts, from the numbers, I, I don't uh, see a small degrees next year. Yeah. 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 Okay. And with respect to the inventory bubble, do we see? Do you see that that at least being corrected next year? Do you see a reduction in your own inventory, which will like, will actually shift cash to the right place in the balance sheet? Yeah, this is uh, the, the biggest target for the MS industry next year. So creating cash flow again, or maybe after some years, creating positive cash flow again, I would say. Um, we see it, uh, I would say, the, the complete supply chain normalized uh, since three or four months ago from the, from the feeling, maybe not exact facts, but we see it over the last uh, four months that uh, the stock level is uh, reducing. Yeah. Um, from the EMS point, of course, we have the other point that the distribution uh, market, so all the distributors still have uh, extreme high level on, on components and we have 
yeah, daily discussions with our distributor partners and our OEMs yeah, to ship material uh, as we need it. Yeah. So this will balance time and uh, some agreements are very easy to handle, some agreements are difficult to handle as you know. Uh, don't to talk in details about that, but you can imagine. Um, so I think we will have a, a normal situation hopefully in the second quarter, uh, the second half of next year. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and you, one of the interesting things when you do have this market is the M&A market changes completely. Last year the M&A market and the year before was all about increasing capacity, people paying high, high prices. Now I think we move to something that's much more opportunistic. Is that something that is significant for a company like Prattle? Do you see opportunities maybe to grow your business because you are in a good cash position? Definitely. Um, um, as explained, we are a family business company and uh, in third generation. And third generation means, uh, I have to explain, the second generation is still operating the company. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about uh, two brothers, uh, uh, older than 70 years. And the third generation in the middle of 40s is taking over the company. And that normally, also without the economic situation in EMS, uh, has, has one shift in the yeah, business orientation of the company and the vision of the company and the new leadership. Um, and therefore, we are discussing since the last year, during this period, last years during this period, about the new and future business models for our company. And of course, uh, half a year ago, we made the decision to sell, especially uh, one big division for us who was focusing in sensor and cable assembly for passenger car industry. And uh, we sell it to an Asian player, uh, to a, a daughter of uh, Foxconn. Yeah. Um, so uh, the strategic view is clear. Yeah, we're taking this amount of money and uh, do it strategically looking about yeah. the next M&A option. Yeah, and uh, what we see from the sea level side right now, I never had the situation in the EMS industry before, how many options in M&A, especially in electronic assembly industry. Yeah, are on the desk right now, and this is not mainly driven about uh, yeah, bad results. This is mainly driven on cash flow issues. Yeah, but uh, also when we look about our company, if I really just looking about net cash flow over the last two or three years, you need to say as an owner, this is not a profitable business. Yeah, but the situation, as you know, in EMS and electronic industry, after an allocation phase changed during the last two years. Hopefully we will not get the next allocation uh, too, sh too short in too short time. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it'll, it'll, it'll be a, a brighter future from there. And in the meantime, when you do see this kind of leveling off or, or lack of growth in the market, is that a time to kind of consolidate and focus on operational excellence and focus on getting the right talent in and building, building the business in the best way you can? Yeah, the, the problems are the same from the from the yeah, development of the companies itself. Yeah, and hopefully you have a little bit more time and not every day customer escalation, supplier escalation, manufacturer escalation to run as much as possible for the customer demand to solve their possible business. Yeah, and uh, hopefully you're getting back to normal and can produce in normal shifts. I think. It is not a secret uh, if you ask all the C leaders and, and uh, EMS industry in Germany that all of us are running minimum six days, three shift uh, the lines. Uh, uh, I also know some companies who are running in, in uh, seven days, uh, three shift, yeah? and that for a long time. So this is getting back to normal. And of course, the problems that I want to say is uh, still, um, yeah, uh, the qualified engineers, the qualified people for the growth that will, become, that will come again. So. What are the tasks we have to solve? We have to look about our yeah, next generation. We have, to, we have to bring the right people to the right position. Yeah. We should use this time, maybe next year, to optimize our processes, especially not always in operations excellence, because everybody of us is always focusing on operation excellence. Maybe also also the, the commercial processes. Yeah, business, excellence. Yeah, business excellence overall, yes, you're right. And of course, uh, the digital transform transformation of the of the business completely from supplier side to customer side, and the transparency in all processes should be the next major step for the industry. Yeah. And this time, maybe could be a good option. Also, we are deciding to to implement a new ERP system globally next year. 
So this investment is done for the future. Um, uh, also, yeah, for the period next year, and hopefully every will everything will run in, in best performance with a, with the switch to the first January of 25. Yeah. So when the market this picks this up, other yeah. task for next year, I guess. Yeah, and we'll keep you busy. Thank you so much for your time, Carsten. Pleasure to talk to you. All the best for the remainder of this year and next year, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bill.